Hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this week's video we'll be continuing our journeys in the Grand Canyon with day number two. If you have not seen the first video be sure to check it out somewhere up here, I'm not sure what side. After a not so pleasant night's sleep we got up very early or we were already awake and decided to leave the tent to catch the sunrise. 5.30 in the morning. Coffee. <laughs> we woke up for this, hope it's good. It is 6.30, we got breakfast here, back from the sunrise. Got some coffee and oatmeal in a bar probably. Cheers. After breakfast is when we made the not so difficult decision to leave the Grand Canyon a night early because there was actually a chance of a snowstorm coming in. We were already struggling for warmth on the first night and as amazing as the Grand Canyon is, I needed some sleep. We decided to head to the other part of the park, which we had not yet explored yet, Grand Canyon Village. Our plan was to hike the Bright Angel Trail early in the morning to try to avoid some of the traffic, but what we didn't account for is people hiking up out of the canyon from spending the night down there, and there were a lot of people coming up. There's water and restrooms at the top of the trail, and it technically has two entrances, but they connect very shortly after they start. When the map and guides say first tunnel, it's more of a thick archway, so don't get too excited. Another thing we didn't consider is how cold it was that morning. I started the hike in a sweater and gloves, and I kept it on for longer than I cared to admit. The Bright Angel Trail had a gradual decline with less switchbacks than South Kaibab. It was definitely more busy than that trail also. I think this is because people can walk up to the trailhead instead of having to take a bus. This trail is, is greener and has more forestry, but also has steeper edges and is more rocky. Our goal was to make it to the mile and a half rest house, but again, we didn't make it that far. We stopped before the second set of switchbacks because at that point we had passed people coming up and they said, you go so deep into the canyon that your view sort of gets cut off from going in. So we decided to turn around then. At the point where we turned around, we could see Indian Garden and the rest house. And it was sort of like an oasis in the desert. It looked really pretty. But again, if you had gone down to that point, you wouldn't be able to see any views because of the trees and foliage would be blocking everything. During this hike, my knee also started hurting. It's not important in this video, but in Paige, I did have a knee brace. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss that video next week. But I wanted to explain it now because I, that's sort of why we didn't hike as far also. Made it back to the tap. Hey. <laughs> Hi, bye. <laughs> Made it back to the tap. Sweater's back on because the wind's back. We have about an hour before our lunch reservations. So right now we're by the KOLB studio. Oh. <laughs> studio. And we're probably gonna walk all the way to the lunch spot at Tres. L. Tri I'm just gonna put it on the screen, it's fine. We can't say anything here. Um, yeah, just make it over there, stop at some gift shops. Um, that hike, what do you think? It was, it was worth it, but we did not go. Yeah, we didn't make it to our goal, but it's also, you're going down and you have weight with all the water you're carrying. And every step you go down, you have to come back up. So it's like discouraging to go further into the canyon. Yeah. So we went to a great lookout and then just turned around. Yeah. Not sure how far we went, but, but it's okay. It was worth it. I think it was a good little hike. The souvenir shops at the Grand Canyon are also sourced by different people. So if you go to Grand Canyon Village, there are technically different souvenirs than Grand Canyon Visitor Center. So don't don't not go into the gift shops because you think you've already seen everything. I would go into all of them. Cause also I collect spoons and the first 
gift shop we went in didn't have any and the second one we had did. Once it was finally time for our reservation at El Tavola, we went in and I felt extremely underdressed immediately. I was in the hiking clothes that I had been wearing for a few hours and and the waiter literally had a vest and bow tie on as he was leading us to our table. But once you got into the dining room, you realized a lot of people there are either hotel guests or they are hikers coming in just like you. So it's okay that you're in your hiking clothes, I promise. During making the reservation, I mentioned that it was our first time there and I wanted a seat with a view and we got to sit right next to the window so you could see the canyon from our table. They had really great service. My drink was never empty. The food was absolutely amazing. I didn't film in there because I felt like everyone was watching me, but I did take pictures of my food and everything, so I will show you those. I would definitely recommend making a reservation before because I have no idea how long the wait time would be considering that it is a restaurant mainly for the hotel. I got the fettuccine alfredo basil pesto and Jessica got the same thing and oh my gosh it was so good especially after a morning hike and the cold weather it was great to get out of the wind and enjoy some hot food. Also, I saw this on a video that I will link below. I'm not sure what the title of it is right now, but it's a previous Grand Canyon tour guide talking about how to make the most out of your trip to the Grand Canyon. And one of the things he mentions is that everyone wants to go to El Tavola for dinner where it's like $30 ish a plate, but if you go for lunch, it's the same quality of food, but it's only $15 a plate. So that's why we ended up going for lunch. After our lunch, we made the super windy journey back to our car and we actually passed the train station right when all the train guests were getting to the rim. And it was a flood of people. I cannot imagine being on that side of the park when all of the train passengers are there. It was just so crowded, so many people. Like I felt like we were at like a sporting event and everyone was rushing to get inside. That's how many people it was. But after we made it back to our car, we hit the road. Full of food, injured knees, made it back to the car. <laughs> we done. <laughs> Finally. Hello. So you may notice we're in a little bit different location. We actually only ended up staying one night at the canyon because um, while we were camping there, the entire time there was a wind advisory. So anytime we were outside and it was like, oh, it's 50 degrees, it felt way, way, way colder than that. And we did not get good sleep and we were freezing the entire day. So we just needed a reset and especially a shower. So we headed out early and drove all the way over here to Paige, relaxed in the hot tub yesterday. Well tried to, it wasn't very relaxing. Spent the night here and now we'll be exploring Page for the next few days. So this is the end of the Grand Canyon video and next up will be the Page video. Hope you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you there, bye. Do you guys have a mom? Are you children? Did you see it? Oh. Yes, Man, the, well, I thought it was those ones with the, with the like oh. tusks that like charge you. I was literally like, oh my god, what are we supposed to do? Like, yeah. if a pig runs at us, run to the Grand Canyon? Like, what's the move?